All right, everyone. So it seems as we are tie in this presidential election, both when it comes to popular vote and the Electoral College, which shows that polls are just snapshots in time. You know, a few weeks ago or just last week, Democrats were feeling really good. Now it's kind of come back down to earth moment for the Democrats and really, really work hard to try to win this election. So I am actually leaving Europe today and going back to the United States. I was thinking it'd be a quiet day. I wake up, there's just a slew of polls to go over. So we're not going to be able to get through all of them, uh, but we are going to get through the main ones that were published. Maybe in the next video I do, which will be back in the United States, uh, I will look at some of the polls that maybe I miss, but we are going to hit the main polls. And the first one that we're going to hit today is the one that I think everyone's kind of talking about, even though I don't think it's the one we should be focusing on the most, or the ones I guess I should say to be focusing on the most, and that is the New York Times poll. So let's go ahead and look at the New York Times national poll where it shows its tie 47 to 47% for Kamala Harris. Now, even though this is off a little bit, this is not off as much from what we had eight days ago. So let's go ahead and compare the poll from the New York Times that was done on the 8th of September and the one that was released on the 16th. And you'll see there hasn't been really much change at all. So if you see overall, she remains at 47% with men, she's only up by one, 39 to 40. And with women, she's also only up by one, 53 to 54. With white voters, she's gone up by 2%. With black voters, she's gone up 1%. Now, with Hispanic voters, we do see her down 4%, which might account for the reason why she's not leading in this poll, because of the drop in that support. However, other voters have also dropped as well. I don't know how much of the percentage of the population that would be, but that can also lead to the reason why it is tie. Now, if we look at the age distribution, this is where we kind of actually see some movement because the 18 to 29 year olds, we see they've gone from 51% to 58%. This is about the biggest jump we see in this entire nationwide poll. As you can see, 30 to 44 year olds gone down by only two, went up by 4% amongst 45 to 64, and then lost to a 65 and older. So we can see there's just a little bit of movement, probably not, doesn't really mean much. That 18 to 29 number though, that does show a shift. Okay, so the New York Times also did a poll in Pennsylvania, and it's not far off from what we saw back in August. Right now it's 46 to 50 in favor of Kamala Harris, even though other state polls are showing Pennsylvania closer we do see a little bit of a gap here. Now, let's go ahead and compare those September cross tabs, the ones we have now, to the ones back in August and see what kind of shifts we have. Okay, so before we start, I just wanna apologize for it saying September 8th there. That should be August and then September, okay? So it is a one month difference. So if we look overall, Kamala Harris hasn't moved at all. If we look at men, she has dropped 6%. And if we look at women, she has increased 6%. So we are seeing that Kamala Harris, we are starting to see this, this gap, this gender gap really now occurring in a lot of the polls. Now, some of the ones we're gonna look at at Emerson, we don't really see it as much, but we do see it here in Pennsylvania and other nationwide polls and state polls as well have shown that we are seeing this gender gap Gap. And it seems like male voters are kind of diverging a little bit, but female voters are diverging more. And that can be the difference in this election. Now, if we look at race when it comes to Pennsylvania, we see Kamala Harris lost 1% uh, with white voters, lost 2% with black voters, but then went from 43 to 60. This would include Hispanic voters as well as Asians and others. So uh, that big boost will help keep her at that 50%. And those other margins are so small, they're probably not even really moving. Now, as we saw in the national poll, we look at the age distribution and 18 to 29 year olds Big, big boom, 12% increase for Kamala Harris. We see 30 to 44, but just a 2% increase. Same thing with 45 to 64, but she has dropped with 65 and older voters by three. Again, these last three groups, the, the margins of change are so small, they don't really matter. But that first group, 18 to 29, it really does matter. That's huge. Now, if we look at the geographical distribution, this is going to be important when we look at the Washington Post poll and why that poll could be absolute garbage, is that we can see Allegheny County, we can see Kamala Harris, 
had 59% back in August. Again, sorry for it saying September. And we see a drop of 1%. Philadelphia, the, the Philly suburbs, all of these have stayed the same. The only one that is very, very important in this poll is that Northeast Lehigh Valley vote. So as I mentioned in my video that I did about Pennsylvania, I'll link that up here about how the Democrats win Pennsylvania. If they can bring down, the, the Northeast is the battleground. If they can bring down the margins in the Northeast, or they can start turning those counties blue again like they did back when Barack Obama was president, then they're going to have a lock on Pennsylvania. And from this poll, it indicates that with this 5% increase, that the Democrats can actually possibly win or at least make it very, very competitive in the Northeast. Okay, as I mentioned before, you do have a Washington Post poll that was done of Pennsylvania. Um, it's very, very close. Kamala Harris only up by 1%. So let's go ahead and look at the cross tabs when it comes to that race and see what differences there are and like one big, big glaring error that actually favors Kamala Harris. So let's get into the overall numbers so we can see that Donald Trump is down 147 to 48. When it comes to male voters, he does have a nine point lead, 43 to 52. And then we see a 10 point lead for women for Kamala Harris, 53 to 43. All right, so we look at moderate voters, we see 60 to 34 for Kamala Harris, 65 and older voters, 51 to 45, 18 to 29 year olds, 53 to 43, and independents basically tie. Now, as I've mentioned in other videos, I think there are three and basically four groups that Kamala Harris needs to really improve on. Hispanic voters, moderate voters, which she's doing well with here, senior voters, 65 and older, which she's doing well here. But as I've mentioned in other videos, those numbers are just all over the place. There's no consistency in the polling of senior numbers where with 18 to 29 year olds, the younger voters, those those are that's my fourth group of voters, we are seeing consistency in them now going more strongly for Kamala Harris. That 65 and older vote is just all over the place. And we really we won't know anything until I think the exit polls come because those numbers have been so erratic. As you can see with white voters, Trump's up by 10, 53 to 43. With black voters, Kamala Harris is up 78 to 17. Now, I mentioned this in a poll analysis a few days ago, and it was of Pennsylvania as well. So it's interesting that they do this here in Washington Post as well, is that those who watch the debate are more likely to be very, very engaged voters, whereas those who do not watch the debate might not be engaged, might not turn out to vote, might even just give a socially desirable answer to a poll saying, yeah, they're very likely to vote when they might not. So I've really considered of these polls that we can see where people who watch the debate or didn't watch the debate, how they actually look. I've been looking at those to kind of get an idea of enthusiasm for the Democrats. So if we look in this one, so if we look at the bait watchers, we see 54 to 43. She just clobbers him in this one. But if we look at non-debate watchers, he is ahead. And I'm just telling you, if I'm a campaign, I would rather have that debate watchers number than that non-debate watchers number. And again, combined with the polls that we talked about before with enthusiasm gaps uh, in Pennsylvania, particularly, and debate watchers, these numbers look really, really good if you're a Democrat. Now, as I've mentioned, there is one big problem when it comes to the Washington Post poll. And now, most of the geographical breakdown seems as it should, except for Allegheny County. Let's go ahead and look at Allegheny County. Now, according to the Washington Post poll, it shows that Donald Trump is up by 4% in Allegheny County, whereas in reality, if we look at the last election, Joe Biden won it by more than 20%. So they're saying in order for the state to be tied, which 10% of the vote is going to be in, 10, 11% is going to be in Allegheny County, their poll relies on Trump winning Allegheny County, a county that is actually becoming more and more democratic, something you just don't see as much in the western part of the state. So this number of Donald Trump winning Allegheny County by 4% is an absolute joke. And I think this number alone kind of throws this poll out. Okay, and that unfortunately means the debate watchers numbers and all that, that number there is just not acceptable 
don't publish that because there's just no way in hell, especially with a large percentage of the population as we see, no way in hell the Republicans are going to win Allegheny County. And I will bet money on that, okay? Definitely. So now we're done with Washington Post and New York Times. Now we're going to come to the Emerson State Polls, which are, these are worrying for Democrats. I mean, these are, the reason why I have tied is because I looked at these polls and I go, wow, these polls are bad for the Democrats. This should make them worry. This should make them sweat because comparing these polls to the exit polls back in 2000, the breakdowns are the demographic breakdowns and the breakdown of how the vote is going to be is pretty darn close and pretty spot on, which I mean, you could look at it as, oh, well, then that means that Joe Biden will win because Joe Biden won in 2020. I guess you can go ahead and, and spin it that way, but it does mean it is much, much closer than we think. Now, before we get into the Emerson polls, first, I want to thank each and every one of you for coming here and taking your time to watch my video. It really means a lot in the comments below and all the interaction you do means a lot. Now, I do have to say one thing, which is that when looking at the statistics for my videos, 90% of you aren't subscribed. But if you like the content that I have, you, you find worth in it and you think it can make you more informed when it comes to what's happening in the election, please subscribe to my channel. Just hit the subscribe button, hit the little bell so you get the notifications as well. It would be great to have you on board. Uh, but yeah, please subscribe to the channel so you can be updated. I do a video every day about the numbers. Even when I go to a hotel room tomorrow and I'm in Chicago, I'm going to be looking at numbers, making sure you get the information. So again, for all of you who have subscribed, thank you very, very much for joining the channel. And if you ever want to be a member and to actually financially support the channel so we can build more on what is happening here, please become a member below. All right. Let's get into the Emerson polls. Now, if we look at the Emerson poll, we can see Kamala Harris is up 50 to 49, definitely within the margin of error. As you can see, white voters, she is losing 56 to 43, and black voters, she has went in 86 to 14. These are pretty much in line with the exit polls back in 2020. So now if we go over to the male female number, you see that Donald Trump is up by 10, 54 to 44. And then you can see that Kamala Harris is up when it comes to female voters by 8%, 54 to 46. Now, these seem a lot closer and more uh, like uniformed when it comes to these numbers. These are basically what the exit polls out of Pennsylvania said in 2020. So these are actually not far off. Okay, let's go to the next state. Okay, so if we look at the Emerson College poll from Arizona, we see Kamala Harris is down by 1%. We see Trump slightly winning male voters and Kamala Harris slightly winning female voters. Now, you might think these gaps are really, really short. These can't be right. Well, let's look at the exit poll results back in 2020, and you can see they're pretty spot on. That you These demographics in the state of Arizona are very, very close. You just don't see this gender gap in Arizona like you do in other states. It, it just doesn't exist. So this is pretty spot on. Now, if we look at the racial breakdown, we see white voters slightly for Donald Trump, black support very much for Kamala Harris and Hispanic support, which is really big in the state of Arizona, 53 to 47. So uh, these numbers are pretty much what the exit polls say as well. And this gives Trump a one point lead, but it's within the margin of error. It's essentially tied. Let's go to the next state. All right, so we have Georgia, where we have Trump up by three, 50 to 47. He's dominating with male voters, 56 to 41. And female voters are up with Kamala Harris, 52 to 45. Now, again, back to what I mentioned before, these numbers are pretty much aligned with what we see in the exit polls in the past. So these, uh, even though that female gender gap is closer and the male one's bigger, kind of counterintuitive to what we see nationally, it is what the state does. This is just how it performs. And this is also one of the reasons on my electoral predictions, I'm just not ready to put Georgia in the blue column yet because these poll numbers are just not looking that great. Okay, let's go to the next, uh, the next slide. And we can see white supporters, 69% for Donald Trump compared to 30% for Kamala Harris. Now you might say, whoa, that, that can't be right. Here's the exit poll from 2020. The, that, 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 there's a reason Marjorie Taylor Greene wins in Georgia. This is the reason she wins. Uh, black support is 84 to 11 and Hispanic support, not as much, but I think like what, five to 7% of the electorate 
56 to 44. So that helps out. You really see, you see way more of a racial divide when it comes to Georgia than you actually do, um, than you do a gender divide. And this is a reason why I think when we look at how Georgia politics works, race plays a big role in Georgia politics compared to a lot of other states. And we can see the dynamic as to why that is. All right, so let's go ahead and go over to the Nevada poll done by Emerson. And as you can see here, it is tie 49-49 with male voters up for Donald Trump by 11%, 55 to 45. But then the female vote is closer for Kamala Harris, 53 to 44, a nine point gap. And again, this is aligned with what we see in the exit polls from 2020. So it's not really a divergence. We do see a tiny, the tiniest of gaps, but it seems like, when it comes to gender, it's way more uniformed. So if we look at the racial breakdown, we see 55 to 42 of white voters. That's gonna be Donald Trump's base there. Black voters are a small part of the electorate and they are 71 to 20. That 20 number might seem high, but again, it actually aligns with the exit polls that we have seen. And 64 to 35 for Hispanic voters. So these numbers, again, if we look at the CNN exit poll that we had in 2020, it basically says what we see here. So there's not much of a divergence. Okay, so if we now look at Michigan, we can see that Kamala Harris is up by 1%, 50 to 49. Male voters are being dominated by Donald Trump, up 13%, 56 to 43. And female voters up 12%, 56 244 in favor of Kamala Harris. So this is one of the places where we see a difference between the poll that was done by Emerson and the exit poll. So let's look at race and we can see white voters. That's pretty much on par 55 to 44 in favor of uh, Donald Trump. But if we look at black voters, we see 86 to 14. Now in the exit poll that was done in 2020, Donald Trump only received 7% of black support. So this number is saying that it will be double what we should expect. And there's no reason to think that his numbers amongst black voters have doubled. We we don't see any actual empirical voting evidence of that. So this number could be cut in half and that could give Kamala Harris another percent, percentage and a half bump. And then Hispanic voters, we see very much for Kamala Harris, 62 to 37%. Now let's go ahead and look at the Wisconsin poll that Emerson did. And this one shows Trump up by 1% 50 to 49 over Kamala Harris. Again, dominating amongst male voters, 43 to 56, but Kamala Harris dominating amongst female voters, 55 to 45. So you do here, you start seeing that gender gap happen. Now, if we look over at race, you can see that white voters are slightly supportive of Donald Trump, black voters, are very much for Kamala Harris and Hispanic voters that aren't as big of a population here, uh, 54 to 43. Okay, if we go ahead and look at our last poll by Emerson, North Carolina, we'll see Kamala Harris is up 50 to 49. When it comes to male voters, you see Kamala Harris is just slightly down, 52 to 47. With female voters, she's just slightly up, 52 to 48. And again, this goes with what the exit polls say. Now here we can see white voters going for Donald Trump, 65% to 34%. Black voters are going overwhelmingly for Kamala Harris, 89% to 10%. And then Hispanic voters going 54% to 46% for Kamala Harris. So one of the things that you might've noticed when I did my electoral predictions a few days ago, is I keep on putting North Carolina blue, Georgia red. I just haven't seen the data of Georgia you know, changing. Now, once vote by mail numbers come in, early voting numbers come in, uh, this will give us a you know, more of a clear story about what's happening. We're just not there yet. We have to just look at polls. But overall, if I'm the Harris campaign, these polls make me sweat. These Emerson polls are, are, are very, very close, too close for comfort. Now, there is one last poll that I wanna look at that came out of North Carolina. And that is a signal poll, I guess that's how we say it, signal poll um, of 600 voters. Now, it shows a tie, again, between Harris and Trump. The worrying part about this is the next number for the Democrats. Of those who say, of, of these 45.3 to 45.6% people who say they are 
uh, going to vote. 38% of those on Kamala Harris's side are definitely going to vote compared to 43.1% on Donald Trump's side. So going back to that enthusiasm gap, we see in Pennsylvania, the Democrats really have the more enthusiastic voters, which I think gives them the edge when it comes to Pennsylvania. But in North Carolina here, we kind of see it the opposite way. So Democrats need to do more to get engaged with their voters in North Carolina. So let me go ahead and give a little commentary here. Uh, why do I think that we're seeing nothing really change post-debate and it's pretty much back to the pre-debate numbers? Well, it has to do with that focus, right? Which is Donald Trump went into a debate and said people are eating their dogs. That's all we're talking about. When Kamala Harris and Tim Walls were doing the best, it was when they were on TV with their positive message, with their issues, talking about what they were going to do. Now, all you see on television is Donald Trump and J.D. Vance talking about eating dogs. They've basically sucked all the oxygen out so that the Democrats cannot get their message out. The Democrats need to figure out a way to turn that ball over and then start marching the other way down the field. Because... As of right now, they're playing on defense and the Republicans are just inching every every little way. You know, they get their three downs and then they get a first down. Then they get three downs and then they get a first down. Just running the ball, uh, running down the clock. That's what they're doing right now. And the Democrats need to figure out a way to cause a fumble. They need to get the attention back on them because when that was happening, the Democrats were kicking ass. Now, since we're talking about Donald Trump, no one's talking about the Democrats. Okay, so I will next see you in the United States in a hotel room in Chicago, uh, looking over whatever numbers come. Again, thank you all very much for joining me. Make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you are interested in these numbers. And if you want to financially support it, please become a member. I will see you all next time. Have a wonderful day wherever it is you are. Bye-bye.